it's time to forge your style and become a motion design champion. You never know what a client may throw at you, so we're going to break down five popular motion styles here in After Effects, which will allow you to say yes to their projects and earn those big bucks. My intros are a bit dramatic uh, because I'm pretty much an undercover diva if you haven't noticed. <laughs> but no worries, everything we're doing in this video is easy and will instantly help you expand your skills all without becoming a diva. All right, for the first motion style, we say no to AI by picking up the brush to create hand-drawn marker style graphics to give your project an authentic feel. So if you're ready to command your viewer's eyes, you may select a pen tool, apparently not the brush tool. And for example, I'll draw out a first grade level line uh, with an arrow at the tip. With stroke enabled for our design, we can use trim paths to animate the start from zero to 100% to animate in your line. Uh, you can also go into the stroke settings and hit the plus icon to create dashes. Sneaky hidden feature, but you know, it's pretty cool. Now to give this an imperfect hand drawn effect, add the rough and edges effect from stylize mainly adjust the border size so you can actually see your graphic and if you want wiggling movement add the turbulent displace effect lower the amount and the size really down then all click the stopwatch for random seed and add like time asterisk five uh, and then i would duplicate the effect uh, just reset it and then set the amount to i don't know four you can then copy and paste these effects to other elements and build out an entire scene with no trouble you want to add a pop of color to your graphics? Well, tell your client no problem because this is how to take simple tin scenes and turn them into vibrant motion graphics. So when you're done animating your graphics, right click one of them, go to layer styles and add gradient overlay. I would choose a bright and dark version of the same color to create, well, a gradient. Then add an inner glow and select the same bright color. Then set the choke to around 35% and the size to about 30. Lastly, Add a bevel and emboss like a boss. Just set the depth to 50% and the size to over 100. Then you may copy and paste these styles to other graphics in your scene. And when ready, create an adjustment layer, add some noise. I like to set it to 12% and uncheck use color noise. Add posterize and set it anywhere between 5 to 15. And lastly, add the glow effect. Increase the glow radius to about 400 and the intensity to 2. And that's one way to make your graphics pop. And speaking of making your graphics pop, I preach all the time to get our free 100 template pack here for After Effects and Premiere Pro. As you may know, we have tens of thousands of templates, including hand-drawn markers, transitions, animation presets, and everything you need to produce the best projects in no time with the link below. You want to hypnotize your audience? Do it by building a tunnel. I'm seeing a lot more tunnels nowadays, and it's great for two things, either to be used as a background or to center your audience's eyes to the middle of the screen to display whatever information. Because this is Sunduck film, I'm going to show you how to create a 3D tunnel. Now, if this was Sun Goose film, I'd show you the 2D version. All you need to do is create a stroke shape and make sure it's centered in your project. Then make it a 3D layer duplicate it and push it back right into Z position space right before you see a gap. Then change the color and duplicate this process as many times as you like. And when you have a few copies ready, layer pre-compose everything and be sure to click continuously rasterize and make it 3D again. Now take the pre-comp and duplicate it again. Repeat this process of pushing it back until, I don't know, you have 10, 20 or a million copies. Told you I was dramatic. Then just pair all the layers to the top tunnel and keyframe the Z position to animate the tunnel. All right, I'm gonna take a break and stare at this for a few days. Right now, my favorite style is brutalism. It sounds like a toxic relationship. We don't mention the first two rules of Fight Club and I don't know why my dad left me. Now that doesn't describe brutalism as it was originally an architectural style that graphic designers somehow adopted and now here we are in After Effects. It doesn't make sense for me to show you how to create anything specific here, but brutalism is all about combining bold typography with minimalistic elements to create something that would feel, I don't know, industrial or think more uh, dystopian alternative reality where you're constantly being monitored by the government. Wait, hmm. Never mind. But I'm quickly building out this graphic with a handful of motion templates with my element builder pack. But you may watch my full tutorial on brutalism and create some really cool graphics linked below. If you've made it to the end, we saved the best motion style for last, vector animation. This is by far the most important animation style to know as you need to be able to provide any type of graphic for your future client projects. Now, I'm not an illustrator. I don't have time to create objects like these. 
Uh, so you can search for free vector files or use paid vectors for client projects. You can usually get Illustrator scenes and open them in Adobe Illustrator. And then all you need to do is separate each object into its own layer and then save that file as an Illustrator document. And when I say you don't need Illustrator experience, you don't. Then import it into your After Effects project as a composition. And lastly, animate the graphics to make your client happy. And you may watch my full tutorial on this process below. So subscribe if you want to be the best and always be creating.